Hi, this is Bob Fossil, and in this video I'll be showing you some newish code I've been working on over the Christmas holidays. Uh, it's a port of John Elliott's ZXZVM to Exidos. ZX ZVM lets you play uh, Infocom adventure games and other adventure games produced to the Z machine standard. This is a sort of a of an imaginary virtual computer that Infocom created to run their text adventure games back in the late 70s and early 80s. So it will play Infocom games like Zork or if you've got uh, newer adventure games or interactive fiction as they tend to be called nowadays created with something uh, like Inform uh, should play those as well. Uh, so I used in form some time back uh, with the windows I think uh, Winfrots uh, tried a couple of games that were written in form on that and use also use that to play uh, some of the Infocon games uh, so it's kind of doing the same thing as what ZX ZVM does let you play Z machine games but instead of add the uh, windows uh, user interface uh, rather than it just being like a kind of a DOS program. So uh, ZX ZVM plays text adventures but how is that any different to the existing text adventures you would have got on a Spectrum produce you know with things like uh, graphic adventure creator the Quill or uh, professional adventure writing system pause I think. Well uh, in the early 80s uh, a lot of text adventure games used very basic two word parsers. I think if you've played any sort of adventure games on 8 bit computers, it's you know, go north, get sword, kill orc, that sort of stuff. Whereas the Z machine that Infocom used would let you enter more complicated phrases and would let you do multiple, chain multiple commands together on one line. They, uh, also, as the Infocom games tend to be run on machines with more memory and disk drives the uh, the games could be larger and scope and and more descriptive in the text that they gave to the users they weren't limited by the 48k and tape of the zx spectrum so i've taken the zx zvm source code that john Elliott's made available on his website and i've changed the io routines that we're using plus three dos to use the equivalent features of exidos uh, the requirement for ZX ZVM was a Spectrum plus three, as it used plus three DOS to read the story file off the disk. Now you just need a standard Spectrum with 128k of memory, uh, 128k plus two. Uh, the port I, I've done is still using the memory layout of ZX ZVM from the plus three, so it's that's using the memory banks to hold the ZX the Z machine's memory, and that code uses the shadow screen functionality for some of the addressing, so that's still in there. So you still need a one to eight K machine, uh, but you just the, the requirement now is just Exodus rather than having to run it on plus three hardware. So I've implemented. Uh, ZX ZVM as a dot command. So if we do dot ZX ZVM, so as you can see, we do that without any parameters. We get some basic usage instructions. Uh, so the story file is the the actual thing you need to run the game with. That's usually a it's got like a dot Z and then a number. So it would be a dot Z three or a dot Z five. So it basically supports all the Z, the story files that ZX ZVM supports. Uh, so yeah, I've added a just the one flag at the moment. Uh, that screen display can either be running the standard Spectrum 32 character display, like you see here on the screen now, or it can do like kind of pseudo 64 character like you get in Tazword 2, where you can, it displays more text at the cost of having slightly less, I think, per slightly, slightly less legible characters as they're half the width. So if I just do ms slash in slash uh, 
basically all the ZX ZVM support files are in this folder and then you run the original ZX ZVM from John Elliott from a plus three that would basically the tap file would create a basic loader program which would let you select a story file that you wanted to load off the disk but we could just do that directly by running this command with the name of the story file and it will load it directly uh, Fun fact, the folder is called underscore ZXZVM as having issues with having the folder and file name with the same name in the bin folder because like the dot command is a dot ZXZVM, all the all the dot commands in the bin folder don't actually start with dots. So I suspect this might be a fat uh, file system limitation of just getting confused about having a, di a directory and a file with the same name. I've been running a couple of games here. Uh, during development and debugging of this. Uh, one of them runs particularly slowly so I won't be demoing that. Uh, that's Curses by Graham Nelson which is quite a famous modern text adventure written with Inform which uh, conforms to the Z Machine standards. don't know why, I don't know whether it's a, just a problem with my porting or if it just runs slowly on the original uh, plus three version of ZX ZVM. I've not tried that. But the text window output on startup runs really slowly, and the game, the response is doing it seem to seems to take a while to do anything. So uh, I'll be running some uh, other games instead. So uh, if I do, uh, let's see, x z v m h dot z three. So this is quite a famous, or should I say infamous, game by Infocom. It's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I'm sure you know from the, the book, the radio series or television show. So as you can see, it's loaded our, our story file in OK, and we've got to the startup prompt, and we've got the standard sort of flashing cursor that you get in adventure games, the prompt telling us to you know, put some instructions in. So uh, if we do turn light on, uh, if you don't know, then you can probably tell from the output you get during the game that it, I think it was written with input from Douglas Adams. I think he did some work with the Infocom developers. So I'm basing this purely on the feedback and the messages you get as you progress through the game so if we get on get game okay. now just to allay any fears I'm not an expert at this game but I know the, the first bit of it quite well as I spent some time many years ago trying to play this. Uh, I think I got as far as getting on the Vogon ship and then I got completely stumped by the trying to get the Babel fish from the dispenser. Uh, so I, I did sneak a look at a, a, a walkthrough online and I, I saw what else was required in the game and I quickly realised I was uh, massively out of my depth so uh, I didn't really get much further than that and as I say maybe people were cleverer back in the early 1980s there's a lot of the puzzles that you have to solve in this game are not particularly obvious well not to me anyway but we'll, we'll carry on for a bit do open pocket take the third cheesic i think that's maybe parasite some sort of parasite one i think uh, so Toothbrush. Uh, take screwdriver. So, as I said earlier, you can sort of chain multiple 
command together with uh, with then. So we've picked something up and then we've moved south. Do need to take the junk mail. Apparently that was the reason I was fighting terribly with the Bible fish dispenser. I miss this step as you need junk mail later in the game to solve the problem. Uh, so sorry spoilers, I didn't anybody coming new to this. So if we go south we know the bit where Arthur Dent's about to just lie down in front of a bulldozer. So there we go, that all seems to be working and displaying nicely with 32 characters. But before I quit out to show the 64 character display, I'll just save the game so we can carry on after we restart. So if I do save, and then as we see about Mr. Prosser, we'll If I quit and 10 out of 400, that's uh, better than I was expecting. Back in basic now, so if I do new, so I do ZXZVM again, but then do with dash C2 and do both hitchhikers uh, we're now displaying in 64 characters as you might have saw from when it was doing the screen the printing to screen is slightly slower but as you say we're now getting more characters online even if they're it's a bit slightly harder to read uh, and to pick up where we last left off at Arthur Den we can do restore and you see the top of the screen the window title has changed to front of house and if I do inventory so that's basically so saving and loading games seems to work uh, I'll give a general caveat here that to the best of my knowledge it all seems to be working what I've done I haven't tested it extensively, I've not played through an entire game from start to finish. Uh, porting from the plus three DOS routines to Exodus was interesting uh, because plus three DOS uses the carry flag on the Z80, it sets it when an operation succeeds and it clears the carry flag when it fails. However, Exodus does the reverse of that and sets the carry flag when something fails and keeps it clear if everything succeeded. Now I think I've gone through all the bits of code that rely on that behaviour and I've had to sort of flip the logic around from Exodus so the correct value was returned back to the underlying ZXVM code and it's none the wiser and doesn't know that it's running on Exodus now. Right, what else can I show? If I quit Do that no and if I do do another game uh, pirate no it's not said Z, Z5 I think so this is a port of uh, pirate adventure by Scott Adams that's the early 1980s text adventure king not to be confused with the other one is the uh, king of cubicle based comic strips uh, and it's a port of the sort of Scott Adams adventure engine to the Z Machine format. So you've got a Z Machine emulating the Scott Adams style of text adventure. So I do remember me and a friend many, many, many moons ago back at school. He, uh, he had an Atari 800, I think. Uh, and he had part of this game, Pirate Adventure, on a disc. And I do remember with a bit of help from the tips booklet or sheet that came that we did actually finish this so uh, again I can briefly show this I won't be doing a full walkthrough and we need to take the sneakers and go up the stairs open book case 
case. Can't do oh, it. Get book, isn't it? Oh, mysterious secret passage behind the bookcase. If you examine book, read book. So the magic thing, the magic word, I think is if you have to say yo ho. And this is why you need the safety sneakers because you get transported onto a ledge. And if you're not wearing them, uh, you'll you'll fall to your death because you're on a high ledge. And then obviously we now need to say yo ho again. And then uh, we're now on Pirate Island. So yeah, so it's not immediately obvious you need to say yo ho, but it's I don't think it's as bad as these other one of the other Scott Adams games is based on it's a comic based on the comic the incredible hulk where uh, your bruce banner's tied up with rope in a chair at the start of the game if you don't know that you have to say bite lip to make bruce banner angry which turns him into hulk and breaks the ropes you're basically stuck in the chair so it's not immediately obvious so, so that's i've shown the 32 and 64 character displays and so as you say the other thing is there's a small advert for my uh, long file main browser which I'll now crowbar into this so if I activate the NMI uh, if we go into that so we've now got our uh, story files with nice long file names that's just the ones we've just been playing Hitchhiker's Guide and Pirate Adventure So if we go down to the other one which I haven't actually shown so far, that's Orc. Uh, start that. So yeah, at the moment the file browser will always start them in 30, so you can't specify that you want 64 characters. Uh, this one's Zork, so uh, I remember this being mentioned in Input Magazine when they were shown, it's a, that's a computer magazine. Used to get, I used to get back in the 1980s, which basically sort of one of those like weekly pu magazine publications that was quite popular in the 80s, and it was actually had like listings for all the popular 8-bit computers at the time, and it sort of gave you information on how to program the computer. And uh, they had a couple of articles about writing a text adventure in BASIC, uh, and Zork was like the, it was highly recommended as the as the gold standard of adventure games because of these of the descriptions and the uh, Text parser, which I've mentioned, which I haven't really uh, shown off too much in my quite straightforward commands, and certainly Pirate Adventure won't be challenging it too much. So, uh, but yes, I, yeah, quite straightforward commands, but not that good at text adventures. So. Yeah, so uh, that's what I got up to over Christmas. That's an exciting Christmas I had. There we go. I'll be releasing this shortly. The link link for the files for Exodus will be in the description below and I'll also uh, include the source code for the changes so that John Elliott can see what a mess I've made of porting it. So I do apologise, John. But you know, there you go. Seems to work. Uh, I imagine there's some bugs in it, but yeah, in the brief five minutes of adventure gaming I've done with it so far, it seems to do something, so starts up and you can get around so just to say this is uh, my first video of 2022 i wish you all a happy new year and i'll see you with something spectrum related or or something else in the uh, the next video all right then uh, take care bye